Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today, we're going to give you another bolo. We're going to talk about TV Guides. It's one of the most missed, most underrated magazines that I see. Most people don't value them very high. I can usually get them dirt cheap in a big, large lot of them. But let's look at some right now. So this is TV Guides. Now, I've just picked some of the standards that you will find. I'm not going to go into the rarities. There are some of these that go for a ton of money. You can actually send these in and have them graded just like a comic book. And many people actually do that. If you've watched Seinfeld, there's an episode actually where I think Elaine takes one of George's dad's TV guides and he collects them and he was all upset about it. I remember that episode. It was kind of funny because um, they were talking about the labels. Not getting a label on one of these is really the key. If you find a bunch and they have labels, they still can hold some value. But not having a label is really the, the biggest part of these. Everybody wants them with no label or no damage from a label being removed. So this is Lucy. She was like the number one star of the day in the early 50s. Many of her issues sell very high. Even up into, say, the 60s and 70s, she had shows all the way through, I think, into the 70s. I grew up watching I Love Lucy. It was on in the weekends. So, I mean, I've seen probably every episode of it. I've seen most of the shows she's been in. Um, she was actually a bombshell back in the day in Hollywood in the 30s and 40s. Um, and obviously she married Ricky Ricardo um, and the rest is history. This one here is one of the most sought after ones. It's number one. It's actually uh, Ricky and um, Lucy's baby, um, Desi Arnaz Jr., I would say, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this one's very well collected. I mean, this is literally the one that everybody wants. I can usually go to an estate sale and most of the time find some TV guides or auctions, usually in big bulk. If they're at a garage sale, they're almost nothing for the most part. Again, people think these are like newspapers. They just don't hold much value to most people. There are some that I've seen into the thousands, depending on the issue and where it's from. So again, these are regional for the most part. So if you sell them, you'll know that somebody's going to ask you, what city is it from? That's going to be one of the biggest questions you will get even before it gets into any condition issues, what city is it from? Many people collect ones just from their region or their area um, to have a look back in time, I guess, with what would have been on TV when they were younger. You know, Most of these type go for some good money. Another Lucy one, just to give you an idea, this is 1955, no label. They will put that in the title because it's that important. And this one's 125. It's a real nice copy, though. So these are 15 cent on the newsstand. Most people had them delivered to their house because it was cheaper. So it's just like home delivery on a newspaper. It's always cheaper when you do that kind of thing. Most of what you would expect with vintage, say, 1980s or before and collectibles of any type are going to be collectible in TV guides. Superman, Batman, um, rock stars, Rolling Stones, Elvis. We're going to show you some of these as well, too. Any sci-fi, TV sci-fi from the 50s and 60s, all this stuff goes well. $200 for Superman on this one. Next one is Kiss Meets the Phantom. A terrible show, terrible, I guess, TV movie or whatever you'd want to call it. Not very good, but the magazine itself actually goes for $165. So it's a decent one, something well worth looking for. So anyway, this is it here. Batman, as I said, any of the superheroes, Wonder Woman, anything like that on the cover of these will get you some money. It doesn't have to be vintage, even up into the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, still sells. So just look at these when you get a chance. Don't pass them by because they're TV Guide, or it just looks like a bunch of junk. Even from the 80s and stuff, you can still sell. So again, these sell really quick if you've got the right topic. Now, I just would bin these all if it was me. I wouldn't mess with any of the, the auctions on these. They're all over the place. People want them. They'll spend a little more uh, so they don't have to take a chance of it getting sold underneath them at an auction. So 125 another Star Trek, 99 now, here's just a mixed lot. Zorro, of course, really good topic. Disney TV show as well. Beverly Hillbillies. I've seen probably every episode of that, even the ones that kind of dragged off on the end. And then Fred Flintstone, of course. You can't bypass these. 100 bucks. They might have done a little better if they sold these separately, but excellent copies. No actual labels on them. The no label thing is the key. If you get a bunch with uh, common covers and things like that and they have no labels, you'll still sell them much better than anything else. And people will buy those, even if they've got a copy, 
um, to get rid of one that has a label. Any collector is going to want these without labels on them. So they will swap up and upgrade to one that doesn't have a label. So these are one thing that I always look for when I'm out there. So if you can buy them in big bulk, it's the best way to go. I wouldn't spend too much on them, a dollar or less for them. If they're vintage like this and are Elvis or something on the cover, I would shell out more for them. But again, know your threshold, know what you're doing in these, look these up. It's not a mega huge area, but there's five or 10,000 of these that sell, you know, for every period of time. So, you know, there may be 50,000 of these up at any given time. There's a lot of these. There is a market. There are high-end collectors and there are really die-hard collectors of TV Guide and they really push the value of these up. Here's another one, I Dream of Genie, 100 bucks. Again, most of these 60 TV shows will sell. Most of the ones from the 50s will sell for something as well, too. As long as you're paying very little for them, you're going to do awesome. And I do get these, probably one of the easiest ones to get dirt cheap, our TV guide, in all honesty. So, uh, the bound editions. Now, this one's from a TV station, it says... It doesn't matter um, where they come from. I do run into bound editions, and I always, always snag them up. Don't ever try it on buying them. You're going to ruin the spine. If somebody's going to want these, they're going to want them in excellent condition. The minute you pop these out of there, the spine's gone, and, and you're SOL. So keep them in the book. Good example, 100 bucks for these. Again, they don't go for as much, even if there's a real good issue in there. Um, just because they're bound. Everybody wants them unbound, but they will still buy them for a collectible. This will give them a copy that they can look through. That's what most people do with these. Next one here is a stand for them. 100 bucks on this. It's just a small counter stand. This would have actually just sat there. So next to a counter or on display as you were checking out, trying to get that impulse purchase. TV guides are impulse purchases, uh, just like the newspaper um, is these days too. Now, here's Land of the Giants. I remember that. It's a TV show from the 60s. Um, they were kind of like miniaturized around another planet. I don't remember the whole story, but well collected, any of these things. Now, this isn't a TV guide, so don't get confused either. Now, this is TV magazine. There's many different sizes of these as well, too. Some of these are bigger. Uh, TV guide are smaller for those of you who've bought them before and know what I'm talking about and the size. Now, some of these are the same size, and there's others that are much bigger. They can still sell. Some of these will sell a little higher, like this Munsters issue. This is TV Times. This was a competitor of the TV Guide, I guess you would say, in that area. And this one went for almost $2,000 as a bin. So some of these can go for some insane amount of money. Uh, it's got cross appeal because of who's on the cover, obviously. So it's the Munsters. Um, it's just a real perfect example. And I've talked about the Munsters. I've talked about most of these things. There's only so many collectibles of any genre or era or TV show that you will find. Now, TV Guide covers them all. It covers any genre you could imagine. As long as it was on TV, it's on the cover of TV Guide at some point. So this, again, is one that you can sell more issues individually than you could in many other types of magazines. Uh, Movie Land or something like that might be a little different. Television Weekly, again, this is another one. Sea Hunt was a mega popular show. I've watched my fair share. Lloyd Bridges, nice cover. They've had toys and comic books and all kinds of things for Sea Hunt. Very, very popular. So this one's 135 bucks. This all goes into the same area as TV Guide. Most people will put the word guide in the title of most of these types of auctions. So if you type in TV Guide, you're going to see these. Part of the reason that I'm throwing them in here, and as well that some of them can be confused with TV Guide if you're not paying attention. So again, if you know which ones to buy, they go very well. Munsters are always hot. Um, I don't know if there's a movie coming out or not, but the prices on the Munster items have been shooting up lately incredibly high, incredibly quick. Just not what I've seen in the past. So there is a resurgence on a lot of these 60s shows. So that's where my money is on what's going to be worth more rehashes. The 60s are going to be coming out. TV, radio life. Now, some of these are bigger size. Uh, you'll see radios in these as well, too. Um, just because, you know, in the 50s, radios were still very popular, and many people still did not have a TV set. So 130 bucks for this one. Not the best cover, but topic-wise, it's pretty good. Another Monsters, 150 bucks. This is TV Magazine. And again, they add the word guide to it. So it doesn't have to be TV Guide, but TV Guide is the one you're going to find more often for cheaper than stuff like this. These TV magazines, you'll routinely see priced higher, and many of these are larger size. So people price them higher like a magazine price when you go to buy them. That's, why, again, why I say TV Guides are the underrated ones that I look for. 
you're going to put the word guide in any of these as well too. TV, radio life. Now they should have put the Annette's in here. Um, you know, she's the the main staple of the Mouseketeers. She's the most famous one, singer, movie actress on her own. Um, anyway, it's a good issue here. Whether it was TV, radio life or not, just things with her on it go for decent money as well. But that's a good one here. And the last one here is another one. Now, this one, if I'm not mistaken, is the same size as the TV Guide. So this one is confused many times. And nowadays, that might be challenged in a court how they have TV Week up there because it's very close to TV Guide, intentionally so. They're sold right along next to TV Guide in hopes that you'll grab that one instead because of who's on the cover. If you see Star Trek on the cover, most of the time it's going to be worth 10, 15 bucks minimum up to 100, 200, maybe even 300 bucks if you get the right one. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you go. There's another item that I do look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.